This is one of the biggest caves on earth. You can walk around without a guide and if you are on weekdays you most likely have the place by yourself. In 1977 we made the first plans for an overland tour through Africa. 37 years later the dream became reality. We spent four years on the road traveling through five continents. Our journey came to a sudden stop in Southeast Asia due to Corona. We have hit the road again, but nobody knows where and when our voyage will end. In the previous episode we flew from the Netherlands to Brunei, collected our camper van and drove to the border with Malaysia. The border crossing into Malaysia, which could have been quite an issue due to our expired import license for the car, was surprisingly simple. There was no other traffic, so the officials were happy that they had to do something. Everybody was very nice and friendly, and there was no issue that we had left the car in Brunei for over two years. Today we will have the car serviced after standing still for two years, and also to have a look at the few issues that existed before we returned to Europe. While we are waiting for the car, it's a good time to do some sightseeing. In Miri is not very much to do, it's mainly an oil town, but at least we want to see the central market. It looks like the market is totally deserted, probably due to the Ramadan. Hi, how are you? Uh, hi, I'm very good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Have you all got t-shirt? No, thank you, I've got one. <laughs> oh, t-shirt, huh? Yeah, yes. Okay. The old fish market that we visited two years ago appears to be closed and we find the new one quite some distance away from the center. By the end of the day we collect the car. They have completed the regular service, but they could not resolve the issue with the vibrating steering wheel. Today we will go to our first campsite, Nia National Park. We have cleaned the water tank and are now refilling it. We have a European breakfast, Malaysian style. One coffee, one tea. Tell the difference. We need an international circulation permit to drive legally in Malaysia. They did not have one at the border, so we go to the road department to get one. After two hours of waiting, we are told they don't have one either. So we decide to continue without the document. We have arrived at Nia National Park. There is nobody around right now, so we've just put our car at the same place where we stood two years ago and we'll see what happens tomorrow. The sky is grey and it's drizzling a little bit, therefore we decide to stay at the campsite in the morning to do some maintenance work and to clean up things a little and go for a walk in the park in the afternoon. The highlight of the Nia National Park is the Great Cave. It's 2 kilometers long, at places 250 meters wide and 60 meters high. We will visit it tomorrow. At the beginning of the path into the park is a small museum about the history and culture of the people living in the Nia area. The first visitors to the cave were here 50,000 years ago and the first remainders of people are from 40,000 years ago.
On the car we have a map of the trip that we made so far. It always generates a lot of interest from people around. The walk to the cave that we partly did yesterday will do completely today. It's about 3 kilometers. It's an easy walk over a boardwalk when it's dry, but when it's rainy it can be very slippery. The first cave we enter is the Trader's Cave. This is the place where people traditionally traded materials that they collected in the Great Cave. People living in the area had their income from collecting birds' nests for food and also collecting guana as fertilizer. People who are native to this area still get licenses for the collection, but less and less people are doing so. Sweeping the floor is banned altogether because it disturbs the ecosystem. We are now entering the Great Cave. The nice thing about this cave is that you can walk around without a guide and if you come during weekdays you most likely have the cave for yourself. We are now on our way to the Ruma Chang Longhouse. Longhouses are the traditional housing of the Iban people of Malaysia. People do not build their own house but share one big building, in which they have their own house. Are you already coming here, first time? Uh, yeah, we have been to the cave, not yet here in the, in the village. This one, my village, Longhouse. Yeah. Welcome to Longhouse. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We were hoping to get some lunch here, but nobody sold anything. So we go back to the car now and make our own lunch. We are on our way from Nia National Park to Cebu, a distance of about 300 kilometers. A lot of roads construction is still going on, the same like when we were here two years ago. Some parts of the road are really good, but at other places you have to change lanes continuously. The best places to have lunch are the restaurants along the roadside, which are also frequented by the long distance buses. You begin taking rice on the right hand side, then you choose vegetables, meat and fish, and you order your drink and finally you pay. We check in at the hotel and go out for dinner. When we walk back from dinner, we stumble upon a special ceremony in a Chinese temple. A host tells a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, okay. Down there we can use the meat and the and uh, up there we cannot use the alcohol and meat. There we go. In next episode, we visit an Iban longhouse when a special ceremony takes place. <laughs>